Hello everybody, my name is Kim and I'm an animator slash illustrator from South Africa and I'm here to show you how to use the perspective guides in Toon Boom Harmony Premium. In this video I'm specifically going to be showing you how to use the grid and one point perspective guides. So as you can see I have a scene open and in this scene I have a color card that I've added which is just plain white. Now you don't have to do this, I just did it because I like to have a nice white background when I'm drawing. You can do it in the default gray, it doesn't really matter. You can also do your drawing in the drawing tab. The reason why I want to do it in the camera tab is because I can see the edges of my camera. At the end of the day it's up to you where you decide to draw with your guides. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my guide panel. You can do this by pressing a plus on a tab that you already have open and adding the guides or you can go to your windows and add the guides from there. So my guide panel has popped up over here. I want to now slot this in somewhere in my layout. So I'm gonna grab it by the tab itself and find a place where I want the guides to go. So I want them here because this is right next to my camera scene. So it'll make it easy for me to jump between the guides and my drawing. So the first guide that I'm going to add is the grid guide. We're going to go here to the plus button on the guides window. Click on that and you'll see there's a bunch of different perspective guides that you can grab from here. I'm just going to go with the square grid first. And you'll see that when I click on it, if I have my brush or my pencil tool selected, it will show up the actual guide. If I have anything else selected, you'll see nothing shows up. So this only pops up when you're using your drawing tools such as your brush, pencil and shape tools. Now you'll see that when I draw a line with my grid activated, the lines follow the grid perfectly. If I try and draw any other shape, I won't be allowed to. It'll just follow the lines that my guides give me. You can deselect the guides by clicking this button up here, Enable Guide. Then you'll be able to draw wherever you like. Another way to do it is to actually click in this empty area over here and that will automatically deselect your guide. You can also turn off the control that your guide has on your drawing by clicking this button over here, Align with Guide. If you deselect that button, you'll see that you'll be able to draw anywhere and if you select it again, your lines will once again follow the lines of the grid. You're also able to edit your grid by moving the horizon line, moving this point over here. You can also rotate this line so that you have diagonal grid lines. And any edits that you make to your grid, you'll be able to undo with the Control Z button. Some other options we have up here is your number of lines. If you decide you want fewer or more lines on your grid, you can increase that over here. You can also lock your guide so that you actually can't edit it at all. This also prevents you from accidentally editing a guide when you're drawing a sketch. You have the option to align your eraser to a guide. So if we go grab the eraser and we use it even with the guides on, you'll see that you can use it however you like. But if we turn on this button over here, your eraser will only erase to the actual guide that you have selected go back to our brush tool and you'll see that we have this option over here which is a full cursor display. Now you'll see that when I hover over my guides I get a dotted line going in either direction. If we turn off this full cursor display you'll just get a short dotted line. I prefer to have a full cursor display so I can see how far that dotted line is going but again this is just a preference that you have if you decide you prefer the shorter dotted lines, then you have that option. And then the last option that we have over here is show the reference lines of the guide. So if you deselect that button, you'll notice that all of our lines are gone, but you still have the baseline and the origin point. And you will still follow the guide lines when you draw. So that's just a basic overview about how these guides work. I'm now going to show you what the guides do when we select a perspective guide. So I'm going to remove the square grid from my little guide window by pressing the minus button and I'm going to bring in my one point perspective. Now if we go select our pencil or brush tool 
and we turn on our guidelines, we'll see that there's a lot of perspective guides popping up. Now this is a one point perspective, which means that it's only going to have one horizon point. And this line over here represents the horizon. So your perspective is all going to originate from this horizon point. And like I showed you with the grid, you are able to edit this point by rotating it and moving it. And if you so choose, you can undo those edits and bring it back to where it was when you started. Likewise with the grid, all of these options work the same way on your perspective guides as they do on the grid. Now another really cool thing about these guides is that you can actually isolate which lines you're going to follow. So for instance, if I draw a couple of lines like this, sometimes when you're drawing, you'll end up drawing the horizontal line instead of the diagonal, whereas what you were trying to do was go for the diagonal. You can prevent this by happening by actually isolating which line you want your pencil or brush tool to follow. You do this by using the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard. If I press the right arrow key, you'll see one of my dotted lines becomes darker than the rest, which means that now my pencil or brush tool is only going to follow my horizontal. If I continue to press the right arrow key, you'll see that now only my verticals are selected. If I continue to press the right key, now only my diagonals are selected. If I press the right key again, you'll see that it now selects all of them equally again. So this is just to help prevent you from drawing on the wrong axis when you're trying to do your perspective sketches. Another thing that you can do with your guides is import and export them. If you go to this little drop down area over here in your guides window, you'll see you get a couple of options. You can rename your guides. If you have a guide that's specifically for something special, a, a specific building or something like that, you can cut your guides, you can copy them and you can paste them like you can with anything else. And then over here, you have an option to export and import guides. So if you decide you really like a guide that you might reuse it in another scene and you don't want to lose that guide, you can export that guide and actually save it as an XML file. Then you'll be able to import that guide back into a scene that you're using. So that's quite a handy thing for when you're working with your guides. So I'm just gonna show you a little scene that I've sketched using this specific one point perspective guide. Here it is over here. It's a kitchen scene. And as you can see, all of the lines that I've drawn are following the perspective lines that I have from this one point perspective guides. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and finish off this scene for you guys using my perspective guide. So I'm going to neaten it up, make it look pretty, add some details to it, and you will be able to see what you can do with your perspective guides by the time I'm done. So let's go for it. Hello everybody, I'm back and here is my complete neat sketch of the kitchen. Um, at some point you probably noticed I added a new layer and I used that just to add some details that didn't necessarily go along with the perspective lines. Some of them did, but most of them were actually uh, freehand objects that I drew in just to make the kitchen look a little bit more lively. But most of this was done with the perspective guides. So that's an example of doing a sketch in Timbrim Harmony Premium with the One Point Perspective Guide.
I hope you enjoyed it. Join me in the next video to see how the two-point perspective guide works.